I think stabilators are really cool, so I attempted to use them in one of my first RC projects. It looked pretty cool on the ground, but wasn't functional at all in the air. It wasn't designed well or built well, so of course, it didn't work well. I still like the idea of a stabilator, and I think designing it to be simpler for RC purposes would be really nice. If you're unfamiliar, when you combine a horizontal stabilizer and an elevator, you get a stabilator. Basically, the entire horizontal stabilizer can pivot as a whole, meaning this configuration has a much greater control surface area compared to just an elevator. Because of this greater area, stabilators don't need to be deflected as much to produce a significant aerodynamic force. Also, because they can pivot about their aerodynamic center, they are aerodynamically balanced. Essentially, deflecting the stabilator produces two moments, which can cancel each other out. In a traditional elevator configuration, when the elevator is moved, the air that it deflects pushes back on it, which means that to keep the elevator where you want, you have to exert continuous effort. With a stabilator, you don't have this problem. Finally, the stabilator is more effective near supersonic speeds, which combined with all the other advantages, make it very popular in fighter jets. Here is my design for making a stabilator that's simpler for RC purposes. Well, I say my design, I'm pretty sure somebody has to have come up with this before me, but I can't find any mention of it online, so yeah, that's the situation. Anyways, moving on, here's the actual design. Basically, it looks really similar to a standard elevator control horn and control rod situation. The only difference is that the front leading edge section can also move. Basically, the control rod is extended so that it can control two sections at once, and the servo is just moving the control rod. So what it looks like is this. From the side, you can see it approximates a stabilator pretty well. Of course, the center section can't move because it's housing the servo, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. This is nice because usually most planes, most RC planes already have an elevator, control horn, and control rod configuration. And all this is adding is a second control horn and just extending the control rod a bit. It keeps most of the advantages of a stabilator and therefore it would work really well on a lot of RC models. This is really useful because for smaller jets with a, perhaps an elevon configuration, you want the maximum amount of force generated from the control surfaces. And instead of having to make the elevator bigger, you can just add a leading edge cut to it that will essentially double the control surface force without changing size or weight. Okay, so here's a very crude prototype of a simple stabilator. So as you can see, just like the design, and when I actually give it a go, it works. So here's a bit of a side view. Each of the surfaces move opposite of each other, and there are some considerations I ran into while building this. Uh, the first thing is that this control linkage here, it's not as simple as it seems on design. So the main thing is the central control rod has to be attached to the servo in a way that allows for rotation, but doesn't let the servo slip, I guess. So right now what I have here is I just, I latched the control rod to the servo horn, which is a metal wire, and then placed some beads of hot glue to prevent the wire from just slipping and sliding. Without the glue there, the control rod just moves back and forth on the line like this and it doesn't actually produce any kind of meaningful movement. I'm glad I took the time to actually design a quick prototype because a lot of things pop up when building something that you don't usually think about when just designing it. So the main thing that came up for me was the control linkage between the servo and the control rod. At the time the solution was to just use some dabs of hot glue and metal wire to sort of lash them together. But that wasn't a long-term solution because the glue comes off pretty easily and in general it just looks pretty janky. So for this to actually be a viable option in the future, I think the cheapest, easiest, and most effective solution would be instead of using hot glue to limit the motion of the wire, just get some tape and wind that up, tape or string, whatever works best, to just wind that up so that it's a more stable limiter. The metal wire can still be used to attach the servo to the control rod, I would just make it a bit tighter and use less wire to make it a lot more reliable and make sure nothing gets snagged on anything else. 
With these fixes in mind, I think I will try to implement this in my next design and see how well it actually turns out. If you have any ideas or improvements on this design, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll check them out. For now, this was a really cool mini project to work on and I definitely hope I can do more of this kind of stuff in the future.